Welcome to Electro Online. For those who live in warm climates, staying warm may not be much of a problem. But if you have, if you have ever lived somewhere where it's very cold in the winter time, you know that heat is a definite need of survival. And so, yes, how much does it cost to produce heat? And it turns out it's a very different cost to keep your home warm compared to providing electricity for your home. When it comes to providing heat, there's no better or no cheaper source. Better, of course, depends upon how you want to look at it. But there's definitely no better source than coal. Coal has an enormous capacity to provide heat for your home at a very cheap price. $2 per gigajoules of energy received. That's a tremendous source of heat. And so lots of places around the world still use coal to keep their homes warm. Gas is relatively cheap, although quite a bit more expensive than coal, but a lot of people like gas because it's very clean. You just turn a knob, push a button, and your home begins to get heated. With coal, you have to shovel it into a stove. You have to have it broad. There's a lot of coal dust. It's dirty. It's not a pleasant thing to use. So people are willing to pay higher when they can afford it. And so they use gas to heat their homes. Again, a real bargain to keep your home warm. Oil is something that used to be used a lot more. It's still being used in some places around the world. I remember as a kid being in the classroom and just watching the flames of the big stove that was sitting in front of the classroom that kept their classroom warm in the winter time. And yes, it was, you, they used oil to, to, to uh, burn that. And then the next source, which is a typically also very relatively cheap source is what we call biomass. This may be garbage, this may be peat moss, this may be wood, things that you otherwise wouldn't use for anything. You can then use that to keep your home warm as well. Then it's hydroelectric power. Now even though hydroelectric power is the cheapest way to produce electricity, we find that electricity is not necessarily the most efficient way to keep your home warm. So if you're going to use electricity to keep your home warm, then hydroelectric uh, power is the cheapest way to produce that electricity, but compared to the other sources, it's not nearly as cheap. When we go to solar, and we talk about thermal solar, so when we use the heat to heat up a liquid or a fluid to produce the, the energy, then you can produce that at $15 per gigajoule. So now you're talking about something that's quite a bit more expensive than traditional coal or gas. The next one is nuclear power, and again, nuclear power produces electricity, and then use that electricity to, to provide the heat, and that becomes more and more expensive. Then we have wind power, onshore wind. Notice that's quite a bit more expensive than producing heat using the traditional methods. And if we then go to offshore wind, then it, of course, becomes extremely expensive, providing electricity produced by offshore windmills, and then use that electricity to provide heat is really not the best way to keep a home warm, especially when you're looking at the dollars. Now, we have also what we call the photovoltaic cells, either on solar farms, large regions where we have just, just thousands and thousands of these solar panels in, in a, in a, on a, like a farm or on a parking lot or something like that. Those can produce electricity and then use that electricity to keep a home warm at $28 per gigajoules. But then when you start using solar rooftop paneling, the, the photovoltaic cells, then you're talking about some very expensive way of keeping a home warm because the amount of energy you get from those are relatively small and you, you would need a whole lot of them in order to keep your home warm if you live in a very cold area. So you can see there's a lot of difference in price as well when it comes to keeping a home warm, when it comes to providing heat for your home rather than simply electricity. And the prices vary quite a bit. Again, these are just rough estimates based upon some uh, way of trying to produce an estimate of how much things it costs. You still have to take into account that there's additional costs for infrastructure and additional costs if you need to build new power plants as well, which is not necessarily uh, thrown into these numbers right there. So that gives you another idea of how complicated it is to provide the electricity and heat required to live and where those sources come from and how much it costs.